Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again uh, with another video. Oh god, I forgot my damn opening. Damn it! Start over. <laughs> Take two! Hey guys, welcome to 2021. It's uh, double upload for the first time. I know it's pretty crazy. And uh, it's me, Rottweiler, back at it again with the video. And today I'm going to be talking about general how to play a character for every character. So hold on to your popcorn and juice, drinks, whatever you got, and uh, let's get into it. Position, let's hit the road. Looking back, I know they probably doubt me. Not a city on my back, I wear proudly. I'm a hero in the making. If I'm dreaming, you can't wake my time. I'm seizing the moment because I gotta go for the time's gone. I'm scared of the dark because I'm bringing the light with a nice long. I shine on. All right, so first up is Zetterburn. Now, the real question is how do we play Zetterburn? And Zetterburn is a character with no instance of a bat or no scenario of where he has no option or an option that's just bad if you play the if you play correctly zetaburn is one of the few characters you have to always respect when he's in disadvantage because of shine's existence so zetaburn is a character who likes to cut off options from the opponent and then once he's cut off the options he's a character that likes to get in right after and when he gets in he's gonna do a lot of damage sometimes you'll get hit by zetaburn just through it like two or three times and after those few times of getting hit you're like how the hell did i get to 70 percent like that's like literally i'll hit this eliana like maybe seven times and she's at 70 damage right and it's like quick hits so you don't think you're actually taking that much damage when actually you're taking a lot of damage especially because his fire is damage over time so He's a character that does a lot of damage once he gets in. He has a pretty easy time getting in uh, if he uses the fireball well, right? Uh, he can use the fireball to try to either go immediately after it and try to get like, some kind of like pseudo combo. Because if you hit the actual fireball, you get no true combo out of that. It's never a true combo when you hit by a fireball. Sometimes you can even hit him first if he tries to hit you. But uh, this is where Zetterburn becomes kind of ridiculous is the fact that, yeah, he doesn't have to follow right after. He can, in fact dash dance right after it to try to make you hit him like you have absa right you get hit by fireball you quit you have a pretty quick and strong fair so you're gonna try to fair him after the fireball right well if you just get whiff punished like he just runs back runs away uh you just whiffed in his face so now you're gonna get hit more so this is where zeta burns conditioning starts happening and it's all from this little fireball here and his damage output is pretty absurd because he can either oops <laughs> Because he can either link together some crazy nasty combos or he'll just hit you like maybe four four hits and then you'll be like 40% like or 50% because for some reason Zetaburn's damage is kind of ridiculous. Like that's 10 damage from an up tilt. That's 12 damage from a down from a down air. 13 from a forward air, right? And this this damage just starts to add up. I think this is also like an eight or nine from his nair. Nine damage from his nair, right? So everything he hits you with is basically like 10 damage. And his fireball has damage over time. And this, with the full hit is 10 damage with the main hit right there. But normally you don't get the main hit. Instead, you just get the fireball most times, which is 7 damage, right? So that that's kind of crazy. He, he builds damage up like nobody's business. And so, again, as a Zetaburn player, you have so much speed. And you're just uh, able to condition the opponent from afar or mid-range. And the fact that, again, you have the option to bait things after the fireball is going to put your opponent in a really bad spot. Because here's the thing. They gotta pick an option. You can't just get a, get hit by a fireball because the, the threat of you getting hit after it's too it's too great. So you either have to jump, which can be red obviously, and you you lose more of the stage if you jump back, right? So you just just by getting hit by a single fireball, you either have to yeah get away from the Zeta burn or try to fight the Zeta burn, right? And this all came from a single fireball projectile that he lost nothing like let's say let's say you you crouch cancel this or you parry it i mean he can parry you back and he lost nothing or he can just jump out of the way right depending on the range like this you parrying that i'm already on the platform so that i don't care right and what are you gonna do chase me you can't chase me look how fast he is right he's extremely fast and he has very quick attacks so you you're gonna run, run at this guy i don't think so so zeta burn again just to, just to wrap up here character who likes to make openings and opportunities with this fireball conditioning and get in quick get out quick and take your stock quick that's just that's his thing and yeah he's got the fire mechanic which uh allows him to kill you even quicker which you know if you don't know it's just a mechanic in place that says if you're on fire by zeta burn from his, his plethora oh, i think every every special he has put you on fire let's go over real quick shine definitely put you on fire 
Uh, let's see. Fireball. Obviously gonna put you on fire. Down B. You're on fire, kid. You're not gonna live. And then he has up B. Which is, uh, pretty... <laughs> pretty niche. You're not gonna be putting people on fire with this. Because it's not really good. But, you technically can if they're trying to edge guard you. You can do this, and now for a while they're on fire. That can actually be really good. So, he has all these ones to put you on fire, right? And then his smash attacks have, I believe, 50% more knockback? I have to, I actually don't remember. It's been so, that they tweaked it at one point. I actually forgot after they tweaked it, but it used to be two times the knockback, but now I think it's 1.5 or 1.75, one of the two. Anyway, though, that's a ridiculous uh, mechanic to have a fire mechanic that ignites them, and then your smash attacks use that ignited fire for beneficial knockback. Fours burn the forest fire. <laughs> that's what I used to call them when I played them. But anyway, uh, He's a really tricky character to uh, talk about, actually. Um, so, the thing about Forest Burn is that he's really slow. So, you're going to be using a lot of platforms in your game plan and try to circumvent that, that weakness of being slow. And it actually works pretty well with what he wants to do. And that's because Forest Burn has very good aerials. His forward air is extremely fast and at low percents, links into itself. His up air has an enormous amount of hits done. And it scales really well, actually, because at like higher percents, you'll be able to do some kill confirms, like falling up there. Well, on a platform. Like, let's say, let's just, come on, Rano, let's go over here. Uh, why are you so bad, Forest Burn? So, like, right here, let's say I knock the, uh, the, the Rano up to this platform. This up there? Oh, I need more percent. Up there? I need more. More! More! Come on, man. Alright, here we go. Like, I think I need a little more percent even after that, but that's a combo. With a little more percent, he'll go a little bit above the platform. And again, there's so much hit stun on his up air that you can actually get a kill confirm with his down smash. So that just shows you his up air is actually no joke in terms of hit stun. Oh, and his snare. Yeah. His snare is also crazy. Because you, you can, yeah, as you can see, it's disjointed because it's a knife. It's also quick. So yeah, Forsman has really quick aerials with his snare, his fair, and his up air. Those three things are very fast, right? And they're in front of him. Well, except up there, right? This is good. So he will be using these a lot to approach people. Not only that, but Forest Burn, he's going to be playing a slower game plan. And why is he playing a slower game plan? It's because his combo game isn't the best. So Forest Burn is going to have to be doing a pick them apart kind of game plan, right? If you look at Cake, uh, ever, ever since people started actually DIing his combos, he's played more, I'm going to get in for like three, four hits, right? May not be the best four hits you've ever seen. May not be the, the greatest damage you've ever seen from these four hits, right? But what they do is they give me space to, to control the rest of the stage and it sends you off stage, right? I don't have to deal with you. I don't have to deal with your character having some, probably some better options than me. But I have quick moves and you have to DI out of my quick moves if you don't want to get combo for 80 damage, right? That is good about Forest Burn. He can pick you apart pretty well. But the problem, or not problem, why am I always talking about the problem with Forest Burn? Why can't I just say the good things? So the good thing about that is that, yes, you pick them apart for like, let's say 30 damage. Uh, this is a bad combo, but like, yeah, you do a, little, <laughs> a little bit of damage. You take the stage and you proceed to get smoke. Because smoke, you can either absorb it for your, your one of your best kill moves, which is uh, combust. If you don't know, absorbing three clouds of smoke will make your, your inside change. Like your, your, your skin color will change. And your character will be, well, basically you're notifying your opponent, hey, I'm really dangerous right now. And why are you dangerous? Because this down B now turns into an explosion. Basically kind of like a really weak rest. Well, not really weak, but it's significantly weaker than what rest actually is. If you compare it to rest, it's really weak. But yeah, it's pretty strong for forest burn, right? This is actually really good. So this is like your reward for knocking them off stage. You get this and now yeah, they're taking incremental damage, but eventually this damage will be high enough to where if you hold in on anything, anything, uh, I can actually convert. Okay, they didn't hold. They didn't hold in. As you can see, if they don't hold in. You don't get it. But if they hold in, you can explode right after, and that will be their life. And and then also, uh, if you watch Kekasol again, the best Forest Run player and this best player in the world, you'll also notice that he stopped even looking for. Uh, com confirms into um, combust. He'll just do it raw now. Like, let's say I do uh, hit you with something, right? You have to recover, right? I'm just gonna like, well, I guess I missed there, but you get the point. Like, I can, um, instead of using something weaker to cover that option, I can use this to 
covered that option instead, right? And that is gonna be much, obviously much more powerful than me doing Nair or down air even, right? So that is uh, what Forrest Run likes to do now. He's not a combo character, really, unless they give it to you. If they give if they don't want to go off stage, and they about to take some damage. Let me tell you that, right? That's just what he does to you. You you gotta hold out. I just think about Forrest Burn. This is why he does incremental damage. Cause most really good players aren't gonna be holding in again, hit in against you, cause they know you can't do anything to me if I hold out, right? And that's why Forrest Burn players have to you know swallow their pride. Except that, okay, it's fine. I do incremental damage. I'm gonna play a really solid neutral. This is why you have to play Force Burn. You have to play a really solid neutral. So just look at what they're doing. Find a way to like pick them apart for doing that thing. Because again, your moves are quick. This is like the, the saving grace of Force Burn. Your moves are very quick. And you are probably going to hit them before they hit you in a lot of these uh, circumstances, right? Now use that. Use that to. Set, like again, he's like, like this. I just did like 10, 10 hits and I did like 70 damage. Uh, for for that's not like the most damage as you can see, but I, I had to reset them like three times there, right? To do like 70 damage, and but it's okay because it's still damage. And they're eventually because people are human, they're gonna pick a bad option eventually, and that's where you can either kill them. And if, and if you're not killing them, you can still be getting this combust. You can also just release the smoke with neutral B. And go invisible basically while you're in it and this just adds uh, to the the play style Forrest Burn does of picking you apart because now you're looking for him in the smoke you're gonna be throwing out a hitbox hoping you hit him and if you don't hit him or because he can he know obviously if you're playing Forrest Burn you know where you are right so you can like like let's say I'm on this platform you think I'm on a platform and they're running at me I can just jump down well you can see me kind of but you can, I can just jump down they go up there to try to hit me and then I back at them you know, as a response to them missing, right? And that's obviously they're not gonna hold in and like get triple back aired or quadruple back aired, but they're gonna be knocked off stage because they don't want to get quadruple back aired, right? And now you you have the stage to yourself, right? And so yeah, your your character doesn't combo as well as everybody else. Your character doesn't do as much damage as like uh, everyone else or whatever. But you have a you have a character who is really good at picking people apart. So. In my opinion, that is the best way to play Forest Burn. Just don't play for the the hyper one million uh, hit combo. Just play for the you made a mistake here. I'm gonna take what I can get, and I'm going to uh, get combust. Now I feel like I'm a broken record saying this at this point, but like I've always said, Claren is a character who has pretty laggy moves, and so she's given a big sword to keep people out. So you're gonna be playing a lot of defense with Claren. And uh, aim for the tipper to get the most out of your hits when you actually get said um, said stuffs on their approach. But it's tipper, tipper, I missed, but you get the point. <laughs> that is how you're going to be playing Claren most of the time. I don't want to be here too long talking about the same thing I always talk about, but yeah. Uh, that's just Claren in a nutshell. You're just going to be playing a pretty good fundamentals game. And you've got really cool tools like with her... Uh, Neutral B grab, her side B, and her down there to get a little spicy with it. Crag is in the building now. Here we go. So I love talking about Crag. Sometimes, sometimes I talk about Crag a little too much, but uh, that's just because Crag is very fun to play and he's got a lot he can do. So Crag is a character who is a zoner. He's got uh, great projectiles, rock, pebbles, down B, and pillar to make sure you don't actually get at him easily right because yeah he's a big character he's a heavy and what do we do to heavies we combo them to hell Craig has really good boxing right I've, I said this time and time again if Craig is on in your face you're probably losing the interaction because Craig can hit you very hard but yeah Craig great boxing and he has a pretty good dash attack it doesn't go the furthest like Claren and it's not the fastest but uh, if it hits it can be canceled into any it, and, and not anything but his his jabs or his tilts and mainly you'll see this used uh, into F tilt like that because F tilt because he's like moving forward with you uh, if they're holding out you're still gonna be right on them and if they're holding in you can just hit them again for free anyway so this is really good I used to say Craig is the character in the game with the 50% uh, jabs why because he'll do like dash tap jab jab down okay let's take off the tech because no one actually texts this let's be real so it's like uh, this jab jab down tilt hold on oh god I'm embarrassing myself again right 
like that like it'll be something like that something really simple like that right and most people miss like some tech within there right and if they do get the tech sometimes they get tech chased anyway and still take the 50 damage but like Greg is a character who really will like hit you with like one thing on the ground and you'll be at 50. so just like kind of like that but usually it's more clean because the crag is like main main the character i don't main crag wait you get the point so crag is a character that does really good damage from his like boxing game like i said his jabs are really good because of something like that and not only does he have that but again his projectile game is really good too and the only place crag really struggles is his mid-range so like right here against from his away from his opponent right here a little bit further actually yeah right here because your dash tech cannot hit them this is called the crag zone why is it called the crag zone because you crag can't do anything to you in this zone okay that was a little too close but if the opponent plays in that little bit of area all your options are very predictable you have this which if you don't reach you're, not, you're, you're gonna be uh, punished sorry and this down b is very slow <laughs> So, this down B will be parried easily from this range. Your dash tech, okay, I'm a little too close again. The dash tech, you get the point that the dash tech is not going to hit them at that range. This will be parried. Um, this, this is not an option you do. And if you decide to pick the rock up, you're going to die. Why are you going to die? Because you can't do anything uh, for like a little short period of time while you're pulling up that rock. And God forbid you get hit while, this, uh, while in this state. You get hit while in this state, you're going to take 80 damage, a life, two lives, lose the game maybe. I, don't pick this up and get hit. That's what I'm trying to say. Do not get hit with this in your hand. <laughs> so, yeah. But other than that little crag zone, if you, if you are the crag player, be wary of that zone. They're, don't let them get into that zone. If they try and get into the zone, throw something at them. Like, hit this. Don't, don't get in that zone. You can't. I can't allow you to get in that zone kind of thing. And some people may try to jump, right? Like this. This is why the rock is so crazy, right? You had this rock. While you had this rock, you are no longer bottom three or bottom third of the, of the of the tier list you are now a threat you are now top tier while this is in your hand why are you top tier after i just said if you get hit with this you get you lose the game right because this has infinite mix-ups right like this they don't know what you about to do when this is in your hand i can forward throw this which means they have to and you can't cross cancel this rock does eight percent why does that matter projectiles can be crouch canceled if they do seven or less damage this is eight percent this was designed to where it perfectly could not be crouch canceled no matter what percent they're at if they're at zero and they try to crouch cancel this rock they will still get hit in the mouth and it will be sent flying off stage right this is why <laughs> it's very 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 good because that means you have to parry this or hit him first right that is bad because for several reasons if you are like trying to desperately hit some hit crag with why he has this in his hand um if you miss time that the hit while he throws this the rock's gonna hit you and if god forbid you try to parry this because yeah he can throw it forward like this and you can predict that and you can parry it but what if he does this okay oh my god platform work with a brother all right now let's say he does this and you parried thinking he would do the immediate one, right? This neutral throw is slow enough to barely beat that parry, meaning you still get hit, right? And oh my god, god forbid, again, you hold in on this shit. As you can see, he can chain these together too. Basically what I'm saying is that rock is, is disgusting when he has it in his hand. So, Craig, if you're playing him, you need to be doing a lot of zoning with the rocks, right? Get your boxing game up, son, because you're gonna be in their face. So those are that's, that's basically how you play Craig. Edge your guard, box them, and keep them out. So just gonna throw it out there, Maple Broken. All right. So <laughs> Maple Broken, she's a very rush down character. She's a character that can rush you down, and then after she's taken a stock, she can, she can hold up behind her little lily plant friend and that's where her life becomes even worse right because she's so fast she's going to get in it's it's inevitable that she will get in eventually inevitable right like her speed is unmatched in terms of running raw run speed right in her combo game she has one I, I've, I've talked and played uh, with a player called soul rifle who is probably the best maple in the world he told me that he feels Maple has the best, the best combo game 
in the entire cast. And honestly, I didn't believe him at first because I was like, Raster exists. But then you really think about it, right? Yes, Raster has a disgusting combo game that can kill you in any percent, right? And then the more I played against Low Rifle, I kind of see why he said that. And that's because Raster requires Slipstream at some point, right? And if, if it's already out in an undesirable place, he, this combo game actually isn't even like that good. He really needs Slipstream to be good, or to have a good combo game. And if you look at Maple, at all points of the game, her combo game is actually disgusting. Like, the way the way she can link together her moves, and, and in the moment you think you've gotten away, if you're marked, but you, you will be marked. Because this, this right here, this, uh, I think it's a, I don't even know how to pronounce it, or how to, what, what to call this? This, like, reversed forward special, that is commonly used in a maple combo. Because it brings you in, right? This is something I wish Forsborn had, something that consistently brought you in. Like, Raster's down there, maple side B, that right here, that pulls you in, right? These moves pull you in. So you're holding away from her, and you get pulled in. And if, you're, and if she reads you holding in, right, that's going to convert into a longer combo. And then she has the wrap mechanic, and she can re you while you're wrapped. And if you think about it yet again, she can keep you on, like, she can stay on you so well. Because this, this is how I, say, I see Zeta Burn. Zeta Burn is a character who, yeah, Zeta Burn can combo you pretty hard, but it's less of him comboing you, it's more so him just chasing you hard, because he's so fast. And Zeta Burn doesn't, like, zero to death hit stun you, not like Maple can. Like, like Maple can, like, zero to death hit, zero to death hit stun you. Zeta Burn is on you the entire time. He's like resetting you. Like he's like doing like four hits and then you get like knocked slightly away, but he's so fast, he's getting to your position to keep following up. Maple's like the same, but you're you're still in hit stun the whole time, basically. Because this rap mechanic, uh, there's there I mean, yes, there are instances where you're not uh in hit stun. Like when she does this up air thing right here, that's not that's not a true combo, but they go for it often, right? Um and, it, and it's very consistent because it's very, it's something you have to react to and know it's coming when it when it happens. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna hit. So like Maple, it's kind of like that at all points of the game though. At all points of the game. And then once you reach that percent where it, where you finally you get away from her, if you're wrapped, like again I said, you will be wrapped because of this this amazing combo like that, right? That was all a combo. And right there, I could have tethered to that. Let me just show you. I could have tethered. I'm not a good maple player, so I can't really do the combos or whatever. It takes skill to play maple. But, like, you get my point is that they, <laughs> they can still reach you like, at all points. So, I actually agree. Maple may have the best combo game in the entire game, right? So, if that's what you're looking for, you may have the character here. If you're looking for the like, hyper combos, like this kind of stuff, right? Like, if you're, if you're into that, you, this, might be, this might be her character. She's very fast. Like, she is... Probably the best rushdown character. In, nah, not the problem. She is the best character in the game at rushing down, actually. Just her her speed is so fast. Yeah. And that's not really much to say about Maple other than she's overwhelmingly fast, has a fantastic rushdown game. So if you're playing Maple, you're probably going to be running at people. But just know you, you, there are times where you still want to stop. Uh, being aggressive doesn't mean you just constantly run at people and like press buttons, right? Take a moment and think about what you want to what you want to do before you do it. And you know, make a game plan. Don't just run at people. When I say hype, like she's like super aggressive and rush down, doesn't mean you should be doing that at all points of the game, right? But yeah, she's a character that gets in. And how does she get in? Well, she usually gets in with this big nair. This nair is huge. Like compared to her size, right? Like, yeah, the hitbox isn't like gigantic or anything. But you think about how small she is, right? And how fast she is uh, the, the the red is the, the entire hitbox by the way so yeah she has two different hitboxes one on her body in the beginning and then on the in the end of the move it's like her her little hands here right and if you think about the range this has for how small she is and how fast she's moving at you this is still perfect even though it doesn't look that big right because she's she's like moving towards you with a hitbox that's really powerful like that like that's so good and again you can um, I've said this in other videos previously but turn this off yeah the leak can be put down here snap people who get close like that that's just you know part of the whole deal with maple right <laughs> she shuts off the stage you know where she wants and she and it actually makes it harder for you to deal with her her speed at that point because you can't go a certain place if lily's there otherwise lily will extend into maple if they're good god damn it nats well Savanos is a weird zoner right normally you see a zoner you're thinking okay 
where is the projectile that makes me want to jump right because every every zoner you know they're a zoner when they have a move that you don't want to deal with on the ground and because uh, of that you're going to jump and then they have something or multiple things in their kit that punish you for that jump right that's a zoner and it creates a 50 50 of um are they gonna do the grounded option that i have to jump over sorry or am i going to uh are they going to swap me out of the air with the option that covers the jump instead right and it's a 50 50 that's how you know you're playing against a zoner so Vanos is very weird because he doesn't have a, a what you call it for that he doesn't have a projectile that does that conditioning he used to with this jab jab special right um or it used to be his f tilt his f tilt used to be this tail swipe right this tail swipe alone when you do jab jab special so you do jab one jab two and instead of hitting jab three you hit the b button which is the special button obviously that's what they call a jab jab special uh he'll do this tail swipe and his tail swipe used to be his f tilt and that f tilt would do this Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta unpause it. It would do that wave, right? And that would be his way of keeping you um, off the ground. You don't want to deal with that because it has hit stun, and he can combo off of it, he can tech chase off of it, right? So I want to jump. I don't want to deal with this, right? He's, he's going to hit me with this. It's like, I think he used to do like five damage or something. He used to do some crazy damage. But the point is that you want to jump over it. Now you don't do that because one, if they parry it, now uh, you go into stun, and that's terrible. You don't ever want to go into stun, right? And not only that, but it's very telegraphed because you have to do jab, jab before it. it used to just be his, again, it used to be his F tilt. So you would just be like moving around and then out of nowhere you would F tilt and the wave would come out. So they would be very scared of this and they would have to jump because they don't want to deal with that. Because parrying that is kind of hard and you don't really get the most reward off of parrying that because he, he, he used to not going to stun. So instead, he doesn't have that. Uh, and now it's kind of a... That's why I mean it's a confusing thing for Silvanos or a different thing for Silvanos when he zones because he doesn't have a projectile for that. The most thing he has for projectiles is F tilt now, which is this is the max range. Like <laughs> this is my projectile. This is my projectile. That's as far as it goes, right? So it's like, well, there's no point in really jumping over that because it's you know it's laggy. As you can see, it takes a while for it and, it, and then if I get hit at any point, I mean I can I can be hit during any point in this, right? So it's not really the best for zoning purposes, right? Unless I'm on an elevated platform, right? Then it becomes way more of like a problem. See, it's, it's way it's more range because it's traveling further and whatnot. But other than that, on the ground, he doesn't really have something that makes you want to jump, except for this, this down tilt, right? So Vonus is a character that I found out is a character that wants to kind of play like forest burning, where he picks you apart, but you're just you're doing a lot more damage and combos than forest burning is doing when he's picking you apart, right? And because he's so good on the ground, right? He has fantastic move speed. He is one of the fastest runners in the game, right? He's no slouch. Even though he's a heavy, he's no slouch when it comes to speed. I love that about rivals. But he's not he's not slow, right? And so he can chase you down with this humongous down tilt, right? And that is the move that makes them want to jump. You're playing like a little more aggressive than you would be, you know, thinking, right? You don't want to just be doing wave dash back F tilt. Right? You still you might still might do it, but it's not good compared to the other one, because it's his, his projectile F till here can be hit by projectiles and or, or I'm sorry hits any attack and it will break the seed right so if they're doing a dash attack and you're trying to keep them out like you read let's say you read a dash attack is that everybody about the dash attack me bat dash attack at me and I'm like okay I'm gonna F tilt him Th his dash attack will hit the seed and then still hit me right so it's not really used um to, to stop attacks like the F like the old wave this would do that because it's not something you can break right but now you kind of have to have to be the one that like dictates what's going on you're the one making the, the the first move not maybe not the first move but you're trying to invoke a reaction by moving in on them right you have huge moves right oh, huge moves and you're like all right i have these big moves you're gonna have to move because if you don't move you're gonna get hit by it from really far away right so like if i move in on you right you're either going to jump are we going to try to like, here's a 50-50 for Savannah's, I should say, right? Like, instead of me doing the, the wave and then trying to fare you for jumping over the wave, it's now like, all right, I'm running at you. I can either do this, I can do this, right? Or I can do, I can read your jump here and go for this, right? And that's all unreactable. You can't tell what I'm about to do from there. Like, I can do this, 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 right? Like, that's, that's pretty fast. And it's from a very long distance. So you have to make, they have to guess from here. So I kind of like want to play in something I call the crag zone, which is like at this range where you like, you succeed against crag because he can't hit you, right? So at this range, 
uh, is where you shine the most. This is where your character is at its best, because it's like where your max distance moves are going to hit, and where they, they can't really hit you, where you can hit them. So, you're, you're, it's weird, because if they try to, like, it's, it's hard to call that a zoner, like, that's, you wouldn't think that you would call that a zoner, but another part of Sylvanas' game plan, like, that's just one half. The other half is when they come to you. Now, this is where every zoner loves. They love it when the opponent comes to them, because you probably have something to stop the option. And yes, Sylvanas is no slouch in that. He has many moves to stop the approach. If they're trying to jump on you, move back and down tilt, right? It, you don't have a real anti-air once they get to like a certain spot. So instead, like Sylvanas, like what Giga Bowser likes to say is Sylvanas has no no option for when people are like right in front and above him. And he's right and wrong because he does have an option, but it's just slow. Like your forward air uh, does hit in that in that range. It's just slow, right? Because you have to jump, you go through the jump squat, start the move up, and it's like frame 12, right? So all that together, it's going to take a while. And they're going to be hitting you before that comes out. But if you wave, it, wave dash back, they're going to whiff their attack, and you're going to be able to catch their landing with this huge move, right? Usually only one. It's like so like you like to like play like this, right? And then you get a little too close, and then they want to like punish that, like with an aerial. You just wave dash back, punish them for trying to punish you before because you're not, you're just like here being like empty. You're kind of like it's kind of like empty hopping, but instead of empty like or empty landing, but instead of you're empty landing, you're empty moving. You're just doing nothing. You're kind of just waiting, right? Because you know that if they try to hit you, you can react and hit them. Like, I don't want to, because my character has a lot of whiff lag, like Claren. So I'm not going to be throwing out all these moves stupidly, because that, that would just be stupid. Because then I know, hey, I'm going to miss this, because they're, they're fast, right? No character in this game is really slow. Um... I don't want to throw out, like, this huge, like, I want to back air them, or, like, this preemptively forward air them without conditioning them because like I said before me doing this and me doing like this as like the 50 50 over here that's gonna take some conditioning because uh, let's say they don't care about me like moving here like and then out of nowhere like let's say I'm like moving up on them right doing this and out of nowhere I do this well that's gonna assume that they they care about that in the first place they could potentially just dash tag zone break me right but if I play like this in the beginning, right, and then shift to that later, it becomes more powerful. Because in the beginning, if I'm playing passive like this, catching their landings with down tilt, right, and if they're too high up, I can just up air them before they get down, right? Then I have time to actually do a huge anti air like up air or forward air, uh, or even up tilt if they are or like doing an empty land, right? I have I have a good amount of options here uh, for defense, and sometimes this F tilt can work out depending on the matchup and the move they use. So, yeah, in the beginning, I like to play super defensive, like extremely defensive. I love to be extremely defensive. People think I like to be aggro or in like and like rush people down, but I actually play lame as hell. I can't lie. I play lame as hell in the beginning because I'm trying to condition you. I want to play really slow, and it usually takes me a while to understand how people play, but when I get that, if I know how you play, oh my god, I can, I can like pick you apart really well. I like to play super passive in the beginning with like trying to like invoke a reaction and then wait and then move out of the way right punish them for doing what they did make them take like 60 70 damage from playing well and then uh after i like feel comfortable with doing like the keep out here then i'm going to play more a little aggressive i'm going to like i understand what you like to do when you get hit right like i understand so if i if i'm like moving in on you and you parry like think i'm going to hit you then i'll hit you after you've already used your parry or if i think you're you're tired of getting hit on the ground because you, you, like you're tired of the parry mix-up right and you're too scared to like try to hit me because you're, you're so used to me hitting you right you're, you're not going to like zone break me right like i said earlier so then you want to just jump you don't want to deal with the ground anymore you want to jump that's when i want to start fairing i want to read that and, pay, and, and fair or hard reading up smash right that's how i play silvanos and i think that is a good way to play him personally right you just play it slow you play it slow and you see what they do i'm getting so like technical and deep with all this shit like everyone else has been like a seven minute uh like explanation but Sylvanos has been like a 20 minute explanation that should be it for Sylvanos yeah I don't know really know if I said anything during that but hopefully somebody understands that you basically just reaction with punish <laughs> okay flame to your neck that's the choke slams that are call a four to assassinate your whole fam Absa in the back she making sure this shit electrifying lyrics over he's so now